Here's all that I have to show in the garden. I've got four Brussels sprouts there frozen. The mound to the left is next year's garlic. I've got three rows of it and I've got it heavily mulched. I was gonna make tomato soup today but these tomatoes have been sitting for like since the end of September so they're getting pretty dried out now. I think the best use for the tomatoes today I'm gonna make a batch of tomato sauce. I may get another small batch of sauce later or I may not. Some of these will probably end up in the compost for sure. I think the latest I've ever done anything with tomatoes is the beginning of December and there's not much left of them by then. We're in my garage right now. My garage is still above freezing here. Today I want to take and put maybe the last of my onions that are drying out into the cold room. Some of them aren't quite ready. You can see this one's still got some green on it. This one here. Most of them are ready, so I guess I'll put them away today. I got like a couple garlics left. I'm going to use one today for my sauce. Of course I harvested my beets and stuff a while ago. My parsnips, I pretty much needed a backhoe to get them out this year. The black spots, it's not mold, it's just the garden dirt. I never bothered to rinse them. They were snapping off even though I got pretty soft dirt. Are they supposed to be that big or should a guy pick them a little earlier? I don't know. I always leave parsnips right till the last second. There's so many other vegetables to eat in the garden, I don't even think about eating them until after after the first snow flies, really, because, uh, like I said, there's so much other stuff in the garden to eat. Anyway, we'll see what, uh, what the ginormous parsnips are like. One of these, I guess, is enough for a whole meal. And here's my beet harvest. I never showed that before. I gave away quite a few to a guy who wanted to make beet pickles there. I kept them in this tub last year successfully so that I was able to use beets in my borscht this year from last year's beetroot. Hopefully I'll have the same luck this year. I got a very small spaghetti squash harvest this year. I probably will be able to keep up eating them as they ripen. Last year I had 30 some and I found that <clears throat> well, I had some in the spring that were starting to go south so I decided to freeze them. I cooked them in the microwave and uh, froze them and they were kind of mushy from frozen. So the next time I can't keep up with them ripening and they start to go south, it probably won't happen this year, but next time I'm gonna try and dehydrate them instead of freezing them. So these are the only four onions that are showing any signs of green. I'll uh, put them away if and when my garage is below freezing. The one on the left is one that went to seed. I must have missed it dehydrating it. I guess I'll use it up today in my sauce. So one time I had like twice as many tomatoes as would fit in this pot. I used a, a giant stock pot. I had to get all my ingredients together, my peppers and onions and garlic and put it all together. Started boiling it and what ended up happening is the stuff got stuck on the bottom of the pot and uh, it burned and it just tainted the whole batch and I ended up dumping the whole thing out. What a waste. I wasted like 30 pounds of tomatoes and all my other stuff and all my time. So I've decided that this is this is the pot I'm going to use and I wouldn't recommend using a giant stock pot because it has to sit on the stove for a couple of hours and if you're not constantly on it, which you pretty much have to be, it will burn. Obviously people say that the Roma tomatoes are better because they have uh, less seeds. I don't worry about the seeds in my sauce. But one thing that I really like about <clears throat> these uh, these Roma tomatoes is the, uh, they, they peel way easier than uh, the conventional round tomatoes. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll fire this thing up. It's going to cook for about two hours. I'll start cooking it now, boiling off the water now. And in the meantime, while it heats up, I'll start cutting up my stuff that I'm going to throw in there. So there you have it folks. I grabbed the onion that had went to seed. You can see it's got the big long seed stalk. It's one that I missed when I was dehydrating. And this one's ruined so I'll have to grab another one. So if you got onions that are going to seed you better do something with them right away. This is an average batch of tomato sauce, a typical batch. And this is from uh, a file I've got that I keep called produce into product. It's a bunch of recipes and stuff that I keep. It's, it's what I do with 
It's how I make various things like sauces and canning and stuff like that. And what I've got here is uh, kind of a recipe for a batch of tomato sauce about the size that I've got today. So you can take that for what it's worth. Anyways, I'm going to add all this stuff and uh, check with you in a few minutes. I vary the ingredients every time I make this. A smaller batch I'll put less, a bigger batch I'll put more. If you've never made tomato sauce, it's kind of important to stay on top of it. You don't want to let it stick to the bottom because if it burns, it'll taint the taste of the, your whole batch and you may have to throw it out. I'm adding purple onions today. Sometimes I'll add shallots, like uh, I have uh, multiplier onions. They're kind of like shallots. It's a good way to use them up. They're a hotter onion. You don't have to cut up anything very small to throw it in here. By the time it cooks for a couple of hours, there's nothing left, especially when you run your hand blender through it, which I'll show you. So in addition to the onions, I'm going to throw some peppers in. Of course, I don't have any fresh peppers. These, of course, are from my garden. So this will take about two hours to boil down and I may or may not add a can of tomato paste at the end. Usually I'll add a can of tomato paste if I'm running out of time and I don't want to don't want to let it boil off any longer. Okay so I've decided, I have a pressure canner, I've decided to just use an open water bath canner. Now these canners of course, they've got a compartment for seven jars. If you want to make small jars like I'm doing today, I just want to use the uh, pint sized jars. I don't expect I'm going to get more than whatever, half a dozen pints. What I like to do sometimes is I'll take from my pressure canner, I'll take the uh, bottom out of it and I can put it in here. And if you want to do the small jars, that's a way you can stuff 10 pint sized jars in there. You don't have to, you're not conformed to the rack the uh, jar protector. I guess this thing of course keeps your jars off the bottom so they don't break from the heat on the burner. So by using the one from the pressure canner you can uh, fit up to 10 jars in there, 10 pints. Anyway, I'm gonna throw my jars in there and sterilize them now. I'm gonna add vinegar like always. By adding vinegar it keeps your jars from getting that white scum on them. Okay, so it's been rolling for probably an hour and a half. I've decided I want to make this a garlicky batch. So I've got the whole head here of garlic, probably northern Quebec. You can throw the cloves in whole earlier on, but I like to wait till later on after it's cooked and then I'll just throw it in like thus. It's been boiling off now for two hours and I've decided to go ahead and add one of these cans of tomato paste. And now comes the fun part. I'm going to use a little hand blender to turn it into sauce. Little hand blender here. I suppose if you wanted to, you could take this and dump it in a regular blender and do it that way. I find this handy though. So I'll spare everybody the gory canning details. Just a reminder to everybody to add a little bit of lemon juice because uh, tomatoes are low in acid. So there it is, six and a half pints.